morning everybody pastor rob here shop you with rob i am in deals gap just uh right on the tennessee north carolina border watching the motorcycles go by rat tail the dragon i thought today we'd finish mark chapter one in mark chapter one verses 40 through 45 and uh, you might hear some motorcycle noises, but uh, I just thought the scenery was absolutely incredible. So I stopped to get a stopped to get a good photo op. But in uh, Mark chapter one, verse forty, it says a man with leprosy came to him, speaking of Jesus, and begged him on his knees, "If you are willing, you can make me clean." Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. That's very very important because. What we're going to find out is that in Leviticus and in the law with the Jews was if you touched a person that had leprosy, it, then you became unclean. You became not only unclean as like a sinner, but like as a person that would no longer be able to enter the temple because you were unclean. You could not bring that uncleanness into the temple. So Jesus was defiling himself by touching this man with leprosy. Now, he could have spoke the word, but the key is. And the significance of this is that Jesus is not willing to is is willing to touch the unclean and become unclean himself, so that the unclean may become clean. Yeah, he's willing to touch the unclean and be unclean himself, so that the unclean might become clean. And that's what he's doing. It's really this is not only a picture of his willingness to heal a man with leprosy. Who requested it, by the way? Jesus might. Most of the time, I would say, I don't, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but, but most of the time, we have to ask. Are you hurting? Are you struggling? Are you, is there something going on in your life? You're like, God, help me. You know, you have to ask. But look, look at how he did it. He did it on his knees. He begged him. Sometimes we have to fall on our knees, maybe in our living room, maybe in our backyard, maybe somewhere, and just lay flat on our face, say, Jesus, I need your help. And you know what? He says he'll reach out. He'll touch you. He will help you. However, that it might be inner strength, it might be a healing, it might be an answer to a prayer you had, it might be somebody in your family that uh, has never found Jesus Christ, and because of your prayer on your face, they do. Here comes a couple of race cars. We'll take a pause for a second. That might happen a little bit. These guys aren't careful the way they're driving. They don't need that touch of God here. Well, hopefully they have a, <laughs> hopefully they drive good. It is pretty dangerous. But anyway, Jesus was going to be unclean so that this man might become clean. Jesus said, I'm willing, be clean. He said, be clean, but he also touched him. And immediately, here's that word, immediately, that utheos that we talked about in Mark. It's actually in this portion of scripture twice. Utheos, immediately, the leprosy left him he was cured you want to come to jesus you want to be saved you want to be forgiven of your sins ask and immediately you'll be forgiven and immediately you'll be clean completely clean of all your sin here comes the then jesus sent him away at once and that once again is another uh, Uthios when immediately the leprosy left him and immediately Jesus told him go and uh, don't tell anybody but go and show yourself to the priests offer assessors offer the sacrifices you are clean now you have the right he did not formally have the right to enter the temple as a man with leprosy but because Jesus touched him he could now go into the temple and this was a big thing for these people at the time to not be able to go into the temple and offer sacrifices to worship their God because they were unclean. Jesus now made that possible for this man to enter the temple. Here comes another group. I love it. Go show yourself. He could now go show himself to the priest because Jesus made him clean. Formerly, he would not be able to enter the temple. Formerly, he would not be able to go to the priest because the priest might become unclean and then he would not be able to do his duties. And so Jesus touched him. Jesus became unclean. The man goes away to become cleaner by being 
cleansed by the priest. He can now enter the temple because he's clean. He can go now to the priest because he's clean. He can be cleansed according to the law of Moses by the priest in the temple. But guess what happens? Jesus goes away unclean because he touched the man. You can look at this in Leviticus 3, 4, 5, 13. All these things, these laws about clean and cleanliness. And now the man can go away clean, but Jesus went away unclean. And that's the same way with Jesus with us. When he touches us, when he heals us, when, he, uh, when we ask for forgiveness, he took our sin on him. He became unclean, and he took our sin as an unclean, guilty person on the cross for crimes and sins he never committed. Uh, he, he who knew no sin took our sin upon the cross so that we might be. We go away clean. He goes to the cross dirty and guilty. It's the same way today. We let these guys go right here. Got, became dirty with our sin. He went to the cross with our sin. He, be, he was guilty of our sin and never committed one sin, just like this man with leprosy. He didn't have leprosy. He wasn't unclean, but then now that he touched the man, he would get leprosy more than likely, although he was God, he would not. But he would become unclean. He would not be allowed to go into the temple, and he would not be allowed to offer sacrifices. He had to go to the cross first. Isn't it interesting, though, Jesus cleansed the temple? It just shows he has authority over the temple, over the system, everything. So instead, it says the man went out and, and began to talk freely, spreading the news, spreading the good news. I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. Not thinking. And we do this, too. Not thinking. I'm clean. I'm forgiven. Hallelujah. And we, when we when people get baptized, we we jump up and down. We get excited. We take pictures. We're like, hallelujah. My my child, my wife, my my relative, my friend is saved and clean. But Jesus became unclean. He became dirty. He became filthy. He is no longer, but he did so that he might go to the cross and die for our sins. So the, the man, uh, Jesus could no longer go anywhere because this man was spreading. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? And don't you tell people about the moment you became saved? Don't be ashamed of that moment. And the moment you became saved, your eternity was changed forever. It was a pivotal moment for all eternity. The moment you said, I believe in Jesus Christ. I love Jesus. God, forgive me. You're my Savior. Forgive me. I love you. And he cleanses you. He became dirty the moment you confessed your sins, and he went to the cross. And that was that was from the beginning of time. We talked about that. But the moment you did that, and you said, "Wow, I can feel it. I feel different," you know. And maybe it's not a um, a big like the heavens parted moment. But the Bible says the moment you ask Christ to forgive you, and He touches you, and He says, "You're forgiven," and My blood covers your sins, and here's your robe of righteousness. You become clean in that moment. And from that moment on, your destiny is changed forever, for all eternity. So this man got excited. Jesus said, don't tell anybody what happened to you. Don't tell anybody. You know, because, well, there's a lot of things that I won't get into and all that. But anyway, don't tell anybody. We know he did anyway. And shouldn't we? We should be telling the world about what Jesus Christ has done for us, what we owe him. We're cleansed forever. Do you believe it? Do you really believe it? That's my question. Do you really believe today that you've been forgiven of your sins? Do you really believe your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life? If you do, then nobody should be able to stop you from telling your testimony. You should be excited about telling your testimony. I know it's tough at times. It's uncomfortable at times, but believe me, I've been there. It's not always easy. It's not always convenient. But, man, if you can slip a word in once in a while about Jesus Christ and what he did for you, don't be ashamed to do it. Jesus wasn't ashamed of us. He's not ashamed of us. Just like this, he wasn't ashamed. We were filthy, dirty sinners, and we still are. The only reason we have a shot at eternity is because Jesus Christ touched each one of us, forgave us, became unclean, took our sins from our body onto his body, and took them to the cross and paid for our sins so that we might have eternal life forever in his, in his name. Covered by the blood, robe of righteousness, his righteousness on our account. We become new creatures in Christ Jesus. This man was brand new. He never knew what new skin looked like, but he knew that after his leprosy was cured instantly. What a difference. Could you imagine? Could you imagine having some type of skin disorder and Jesus touches you? All of a sudden it's gone. And then I guess the thing I was just saying is you probably never thought, I just made him unclean. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he was saying when he went out and told everybody. Maybe he did. He said, this man became unclean so that I might be clean. It's amazing. You got to meet this man. Maybe he said that. I don't know. But it says that. He told so many people 
that Jesus had to stay outside in lonely places. But isn't it amazing Yet the people still came to him from everywhere? And guess what? People still come to him from everywhere today. I don't care whether you're in China, Russia, England, Africa. I don't care where you are today. America, Canada, Mexico, Puerto Rico. Who cares? People from all over the world are still coming to Jesus today to be touched, to be healed, to be cleansed, and to have their eternal destiny changed forever. So I hope everybody has a great day. I'm going to give you a good look at this deals gap where I'm at. There's a guy down here taking some pictures. It's 11 miles of curves, and there's a, another guy way over there in the tent. I don't know how high I am, but pretty high, pretty high up. It's a beautiful day. I just wanted to do a Bible study here. I've been wanting to ride the, the tail of the dragon for a few years. So hope everybody has a great day. We just finished Mark chapter 1. And we'll begin Mark chapter 2 tomorrow, I hope. Have a great day.